Hello, and welcome back. It's so good to see you. So, today we are going to be talking about what I've been watching for the month of June. I think I like pretty much everything. I think this month, yes, 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 yeah. Yeah, I like every single thing that I watched this month. And what makes me mad about it is a lot of them got like crap reviews and I'm like what is wrong what's the problem with these movies and shows and stuff like what um okay so I did get recommendations last month and I am gonna be watching them <laughs> one of them I did watch this month but I'll probably watch the rest of them next month um so I do appreciate the recommendations um, but anyway, let's just go ahead and get started. As always, I have my notes over here so that I don't forget what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> um, also, I've tried to record this video twice already. Uh, my, it's summer. There's noise. There's noise. There's stupid kids at the pool house. Don't get me started on the pool house. <laughs> my son is in my room playing games and I'm like please be quiet I'm like I just need to make one video please but it's the end of the world apparently so so if there's background noise just just ignore it I, there's nothing I can do about it today today's just not my day and I feel like I'm hearing the garbage truck great anyway let's just get started enough of me rambling about nothing Okay, so the first thing that I watched was a limited series, and it is on Peacock. It is called The Tattooist of Auschwitz. Auschwitz. <laughs> I think that's how you say it. Um, Rotten Tomato score gave it a 76. Audience score gave it a 72. And again, these ratings are as of this recording, so they could go up, they could go down. It, you know. Um, I think those ratings are crap. Absolute so bad um it stars like a billion people but uh i wrote some names down so jonah howard king harvey keitel melanie linsky a billion people okay um now what is this show about it is a limited series it's only six episodes um and they are about an hour long but i binged it in two days and i'm actually re-watching it again with my husband and he i love the show i think it's one of the best shows about world war ii holocaust that kind of thing i've ever seen okay it's fantastic um, and my husband, he didn't really know that much about the Holocaust, and he's watching, and he's like, oh my god, and I'm like, uh, I know, um, now this show was based off of the book, uh, and I almost bought the book, and then I saw, like, an ad or something, and I was like, well, I'm just gonna watch the show, but after watching the show, I was like, hey, should I get the book? I don't know, um, but anyway, okay, so the show is about this Jewish Holocaust survivor, Lali Sokolov, Sokolov, um, I don't know if that's how you say it, you know I suck, um, but it's, it's about him when he's an old man, okay, and he wants to tell his stories, his memories, before he dies, right, so this woman starts listening to his stories, you know, and then she obviously writes the book, you know, um, but it's really cool because you get to see them interacting where he's telling the stories, and then as he's telling the story, it, like, flashes back, so you get to see the story happen as it happens, you know what I mean, like, it's like flashbacks, but whatever, anyway, and it is just fantastic, and it, as crazy as it sounds, it is a love story 
during the Holocaust. What? It's, it's so unbelievable that you're just shocked that it's an actual true story. But this man, Lolly, which I love that name, Lolly, um, he ends up being a tattooist. You know, he didn't want that job, but he realized that if he took that job, it would actually help him survive. Okay, he wouldn't have to work in the, what do they call them, like work gangs or whatever, and um, he would get more food, he would, I don't know, but being the tat a tattooist, there was tons of tattooists, okay, um, he was technically working for the SS, so, you know, but it helped him survive, so who's gonna blame him, right? And he's not doing anything bad, he's just tattooing numbers on Jewish people, but, you know. And he has very conflicting emotions throughout the whole, you know, time. Uh, but he's tattooing this person, and he always apologizes and says, I'm sorry, and this, oh god, I have an eyelash in my eye, oh no. Oh, eyelash. Oh, hold on. Why does that, why does that happen? Let me make sure I'm recording, yeah. It's like just randomly eyelashes fall out and just go directly into your eyeball. Ugh. Anyway, so every time someone gets a tattoo, he's like, I'm sorry. And this girl, you know, who just got to the camp, she walks up and she's like, what are you saying to people? Are you praying? And he's like, no, I'm saying I'm sorry. And then she just like looks at him and she tells him that his eyes are the color of the sky or something like that and he's like what because it was so unexpected you know and she was such a bright light and it's about obviously his time in the concentration camp which was a long long time like from the very beginning to the very end and i think the only way that he survived was because he was a tattooist if you've seen the show, or if you watch it, you'll, you'll get it, um, but it's, it's about how they met in a concentration camp and fell in love, and it's like, they were in two totally different camps, but somehow they, like, kept meeting and stuff, I don't know, it's, it, it's very hard to watch, okay, um, and it, a lot of the things are just shocking. Like, to see my husband's reactions to some of these things, not knowing that much about the Holocaust, he is just like, he had no idea, you know? And I am, I don't want to say I'm obsessed with the Holocaust, but I, I know a lot, <laughs> okay? And he is just completely floored. He's like, he had no idea, you know? And that's why I really like things like this when they come out because it's like a lot of people, they don't know. They don't know. And stories like this actually show you that, yes, this is what it was like. But this one, it was the most real account like I've ever watched. You know, like it, it was just really, really good. And because it's a love story, it's just beautiful and sad and You'll have a range of emotions, okay? But it's amazing. Amazing. So I highly recommend it. That's probably my favorite thing that I've watched all month. Or like, ever. <laughs> like, I really, really like it. It's like, it's way up there in like probably the top 10 or something. It's fantastic. Okay, moving on. The next thing that I watch is, it's also a miniseries. Um... Everything that I watched, everything was true except for the very last thing. And thank God the very last thing wasn't true. You'll understand when we get there. Um, but yes, so this is another true, what is it, like miniseries or something? I don't know. It's like a one and done type thing. Uh, but it is on AMC Plus, which I watch through Amazon. And it is called The Long Shadow. Rotten Tomato score gave it an 87. 
audience score gave it a 92. I agree with the audience score. It's very good. Again, it stars so many people. Like, there's there's probably hundreds of people in this show, okay? Um, but some names are Toby Jones, Lee Ingle, Ingleby, Ingleby, John Hinshaw. I don't, I don't know any of these people. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, so this is a true story of murders that were committed by the Yorkshire, York, Yorkshire, Yorkshire, I don't know, Ripper between 1975 and 1980, okay? This Yorkshire, Yorkshire Ripper is like a serial killer, okay? committing that we know of 13 murders and 17 assaults and it's it's such an interesting show because it's so unexpected and this came out I think last year maybe maybe last year I had never heard of it and I was on Facebook just scrolling and then there was an ad for this show and I'm like did not a lot of people watch it or something like it seems like kind of older for an ad to be showing up now, you know, whatever. I'm glad that it did because it is fantastic. So it's it's about this, the capture or the hunt, I guess, for this serial killer. Um, and it like follows, you, you don't know who the serial killer is at first, you know, obviously if you know true crime or whatever, they do eventually catch him, but it's like the chase is like so intense because you think it's this person or you think it's this type of person and like they go based off of the clues that were left you know like colors of the car and which now that i'm thinking back like maybe because it was dark they got the colors wrong or something and tire prints and all kinds of stuff um but what, what was shocking is they interviewed the serial killer seven times and they just kept passing him because this one detective was like it must be someone from this town he must have this size shoe and he must have this accent if he doesn't have this accent it's not him there are reasons that he had those specifics but it's like you gotta keep your mind open you know when you're on the hunt for a serial killer okay and like a lot of the police they i guess stalled the investigation because they thought they knew better than some of the victims and they didn't believe any of the victims because at first The murders were prostitutes, okay? And this is in the 1975. Like, why do people be so disrespectful to prostitutes? You think prostitutes want to be prostitutes because it's fun? (laughs) No. Maybe escorts? I don't know. (laughs) But legit prostitutes that are on the street? Like, why you gotta disrespect them? They're obviously doing it because they feel they have no other choice, you know? And these cops in 1975 were very disrespectful to these women who were abused, attempted murder and stuff like that. And so they thought that he only killed prostitutes. So when he killed women who weren't prostitutes, or <laughs> They must be prostitutes because he only kills prostitutes. So, sorry, your your mom or your your daughter, she was a prostitute. No, like it, it was very enraging, <laughs> like, <laughs> but very interesting. And at times it was like scary, 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 scary. Like I had to be careful when I watched it um, because I didn't want to be alone. <laughs> you know, like. Uh, anyway, but 
Also, it was a great show, and I highly recommend it. But I wanted more. Like, when they eventually, because it's no surprise, they eventually do capture, you know? It's like, could you have interviewed him? Because, like, why? Why did he do this? Because he was, like, a normal guy. A normal person, like, no one suspected, you know? And it's like, why? Why did you do it? Ugh. Maybe I'll just go on a YouTube and look up this guy. I don't even remember his name, but maybe somebody interviewed him or something and it's somewhere out there and I can find out why he did this because I don't, I don't know. Anyway, that's enough of that one. Um, the next thing that I watched is also a true mini series. This one was on Hulu and this is one of the ones that was recommended. Thank you because it was very good. Um, it is called Under the Bridge. Rotten Tomato score gave it an 83%. Audience score gave it 81. I agree. I agree with that. It was not like super fantastic, but it was good. It was good. But there's no way. I, like, I wouldn't watch it again. I would watch The Long Shadow again. I would watch that tattoo list of Love Switch again. Under the Bridge? Nah. Nah. Um, but again, it was still very good. It stars Lily Gladstone, love her, and Riley Keel. I don't know how you say her name. Um, I just, every time I see her, I'm like, oh my god, it's Elvis's granddaughter. <laughs> you know, I'm obsessed with Elvis. Okay, anyway, so what is this show or miniseries about? It's very dark. Um, just like the long shadow, like all these shows are like dark. <laughs> I was very depressed after watching everything, you know? Um, so yeah, it was very dark. Uh, in 1997, a 14 year old girl named Rena Yerk goes to a party, okay? <sighs> and doesn't come home after the party. Where is she? What happened to her? <sighs> Something happened under the bridge. Hence the name, under the bridge. Um, she goes missing and something happens under the bridge that is not good, but you don't know what happens under the bridge. You don't know exactly what happens under the bridge until basically the last episode. But you have theories, you know? You have theories, and you're like, oh, she's dead. And then you're like, is she not dead? What's going on? What happened under this bridge? Like, <laughs> it keeps you guessing. You're like, and you need to know. You need to know what's going on. And it's, it's very binge-worthy, okay? Um... And it'll just keep you guessing. It it's it's fantastic. And it is a true a true crime story. And it's so sad when you realize that this actually happened. It's it's awful. It it's awful for every one involved, except for one person. And if you've seen it, you know exactly who I'm talking about. <sighs> and the fact I can't, I don't want to give you the end, but at the end, it will give you, uh, closure on different people and situations and stuff like that, and the one girl, if you see it, you'll understand my hatred for this one girl. I don't even remember what I was talking about because now I'm thinking about that girl and I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> anyway, but the fact that it, it was a true story, it's just, it's so sad. It's so sad. And it's like, it didn't, it was so unnecessary. And kids are so stupid. Like when you're 14, I know, I was 14. You think you're the smartest person in the world. You're not. You're a freaking idiot. Get over yourself. Like, just... 
listen to your parents, be good. <laughs> anyway, it is a good show, but it's aggravating and sad and very binge worthy. It's, it's good, but like, I can't watch that ever again. No, no, no. Okay, my eyes are starting to do the shaky thing, so it's really hard for me to focus. Uh, so, sorry if I'm all over the place. Um, okay, so the next thing that I watched was a movie, okay? And this movie was so unexpected because, again, I got these, like, randomly. Like, I was going through YouTube and I was scrolling. Like, you know how you can be watching a video on YouTube? And then you, you like scroll while the video is playing on top. You can scroll to see like similar videos or something like that. Well, I was doing that. And there was like, I don't want to say it was an, it was an ad, but it was, it was like a, a placed ad or something for a movie. And it was like, you can watch the full movie, no commercials, um, on YouTube. And I was like, okay, but I don't like commercials. <laughs> oh no you can watch the full movie with commercials. And I was like, I don't like commercials. Let me see if this movie is somewhere else. And it was on, um, Hulu or Lifetime. Okay. And this movie is kind of old, not really, but it was, it came out in 2019. Okay. So this movie, again, it's true, is called Escaping the Madhouse, the story of Nellie Bly. And Rotten Tomato score gave it nothing. I don't know. It just says question mark, dash, dash. So there's no Rotten Tomato score. Audience score gave it 62. What the hell, audience? Wrong. <laughs> it's at least in the 80s, okay? 62 means mm, it's not that great. It's actually kind of crap. That's what 62 means to me. No, this movie was fantastic, okay? Um... And, and I was, like, on the fence because I'm, like, a Lifetime, ugh, you know, but this is so not a Lifetime movie. Um, it stars Judith Light, which I love her because I feel like she was the, the lady on Who's the Boss? I think, I think she was on Who's the Boss? Anyway, and it also stars Christina. Oh, my ear just popped. And now I have no hearing over here new. <laughs> this video is so weird. Okay. Anyway. Uh, what did I say? Christina, Christina Ricci. I don't like young Christina Ricci, but I like adult Christina Ricci. I just think she's such a good actor. Um, okay. So what is this about? It's set in like 1893 or something. Okay. Like way back in the day. So, you know, I love it already. Okay, this woman wakes up, like, wakes up in a mental asylum, only knowing her name, which she says is Nellie Brown. Uh, and she, she doesn't know it at the time. This is in the description, so I'm not, you know, giving any spoilers or whatever. During the movie, at this time when she wakes up in the mental institution, she has no memory of who she is or anything like that, only that her name is Nellie Brown. Because that's what she said her name was when she first came to the asylum. Anyway, but she has no memory. And, uh, but in reality, she is a writer trying to do like an expose of what really goes on inside mental institutions, you know, because there's been rumors and stuff, but like, once you go in, you never come out, you know, and she, she just knows there's shady stuff going on in here, so she is like, you don't know how this happens until the end, so I don't want to ruin it, but somehow she gets into the mental asylum. Something happens in there and she forgets who she is, but she gets these little flashes just randomly, like somebody will say a word or someone will walk by and it'll trigger something. 
so she gets these little flashes of memory throughout the whole movie, okay? But what's crazy is the stuff that goes on in this mental m mental asylum institution or whatever you call it. But like it is crazy in there and she she was right. Like the there was this mental institution I think like in New York or something, but it was an island off of New York. And everybody on the island, it was just the mental asylum. And the nurses, they live there. The doctors, I think the doctors live there too. I don't know. They might go back and forth on the ferry or something like that. Um, but the nurses, this power over these women goes to their head. Okay? And there are women in this mental institution. They're not even crazy, but this is 1893. So you could have gotten thrown in the mental asylum for literally anything. There was one lady who was from Mexico. Crazy asylum. There was one woman who was, uh, I think Swahili. She could not speak English. Crazy asylum. This woman was old. Crazy lock her up like there was no need to do that one woman I'm pretty sure she had uh, a miscarriage and she was very sad asylum lock her up what what and Nellie she sees these things happening and she's a very smart woman you know and she's like I, I don't know why I'm here I, I don't know why I'm here. They're like, well, once you get your memories back, you can leave, you know? Um, and so there's this psychi psychiatrist trying to help her get her memories back and stuff, and it, it's not really helping. Um, eventually, her memories do come back, and then that's when the movie gets entirely insane more insane than everything that you've seen so far and this show this movie was jaw dropping the things that happened inside the asylum it was crazy and i don't want to spoil it at all it, it, ugh. but this is a true story so obviously she does get out okay because how else would we know this story, right? But she writes, I don't know if she writes a news article or what it is about it, um, but she also writes a book, and I think it's called Escaping the Madhouse. Escaping the Madhouse. I think that's the name of the book that she wrote in like 18 whatever. And um, because of that, she was the first person to ever go undercover for an expose or whatever. That had never been heard of in the history of journalism. And so once that happened and her story got out, people were like, we can do that. And so, you know, journalism, crazy. Um, but because of her book and her, her story or whatever, it created all these laws and regulations and things put in place to protect people in men mental institutions and stuff like that. So it's like, this woman is amazing. Amazing. And the story is just so crazy. And the acting, the acting is fantastic. It's like, how is this a Lifetime movie? Okay, because some Lifetime movies are like real bad. But this one, fantastic. Okay, uh, the next thing that I watched is a movie. Again, true story. True stories are like the best, I'm telling you. Uh, this is a movie that I watched on Hulu, and it is called He Went That Way. <sighs> Rotten Tomato score gave it a 26. Audience score gave it a 61. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's not the best. It's not the best. But I 
give it high 70s at least okay would i watch it again yeah i would but only to watch only to have my husband watch it so i could see his reactions because the stuff that happens in this movie is just bananas okay <laughs> it stars jacob elordi elordi i don't know but that's the reason why i watched it because he's been in so many fantastic movies and sh shows lately that I'm like, whatever this guy does, it's great, okay? Um, and it also stars Zachary Quinto? Quinto? Mm, I know him from American Horror Story. Okay, so it's set in 1964. And it is about a 19-year-old serial killer named Bobby something. I don't know. Um... and he he's a serial killer okay he he's like traveling around the country just hitchhiking killing people you know just another tuesday for him um so he's he's hitchhiking and this this guy uh jim something his name is jim i don't know his last name um he is a he's on a road trip he's like traveling what does it say celebrity animal handler okay and his animal is a what is it a chimpanzee it's a chimpanzee named spanky <laughs> spanky so he's traveling around the country doing little shows he did have um Spanky had like this show that was, you know, running for a long time and then the contract got canceled. So now Jim and Spanky have to travel around the country, you know, just picking up whatever shows they can do. And, um, so they're at a gas station and Bobby, serial killer Bobby is hitchhiking and... Jim and Spanky decide to give this kid a lift because they're on they're on the same route and <sighs> serial killer Bobby something there's definitely a screw loose okay obviously since he's a murderer um but he's just he's very sensitive like you say the wrong thing and he'll get really angry really fast um and they're just on this road trip and the guy, the, the animal hander, Jim, just starts asking questions like, where are you from? Where are you headed? Whatever. And then Bobby gets all like, why are you asking so many questions? What the hell? And blah, you know? And he's like, oh, sorry. I'm just trying to make conversation, you know? And then they make it to this hotel and he's like do you want me to get you a room or something he's like no i'll, I'll sleep in the car and he's like mm, don't stick on my monkey or my chimpanzee or whatever and he's like i won't he's he's and then like for some reason he pulls a gun out and he's like if you tell anybody that i'm here or whatever if you call the cops i'll kill spanky and so he's like oh my god so he doesn't call the cops or whatever, and then they go on this road trip together. And he's basically, Jim is basically held hostage by Bobby, but at the same time, Bobby likes him. And Jim doesn't know that he's a serial killer. He's just like, this guy's a bit crazy. So he tries to befriend him, and they end up actually becoming like friends. And it's the craziest, the craziest story I've ever heard, okay? And then, I don't want to give you the ending, okay? But it's insane. It's insane. And it's like, I could not, it, it was like magnetic. I could not look away because I'm like, what the hell is going on? what is going on <laughs> i don't know why it got 
why Rotten Tomatoes? Why would you give it a 26? Like, what? But it's a true story. So then at the end, you get, like, the descriptions that you have to read, what happens to everyone. And it's just like, oh, oh my god. Like, it, it's just pure craziness. Pure craziness. But I could not look away. And also scary, because you don't know what is going to happen with this guy. Ooh. Okay. And the next thing that I watched was a movie. Uh, I watched it on AMC Plus through Amazon. Rotten Tomato score gave it a 97. Audience score gave it an 81. This movie is not something that I would typically watch. Uh, but it's a scary movie okay and my husband's best friend came and spent the night he lives quite far away so when he comes to visit he just stays here you know and we always like to watch scary movies together um so we watched late night with the devil oh my gosh and i don't know any of the people in it but the main guy is david Dast Malakian? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so this movie was freaking terrifying. At first, it was like, oh, this is cool. I like how it's set up and a little funny. And then all of a sudden, you're like, whoa, what is happening? Uh, uh, like, if <laughs> I felt safer that everybody was here like my even my daughter watched it and she freaking loved it and i'm like girl you crazy you crazy everyone everyone loved it but it scared the crap out of me i'm so glad that i watched it in a group of people um because there's no way no way that i would ever be able to watch this on my own no 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 it is too scary which is why i'm like thank god this wasn't a true story <laughs> um Okay, so the situation is, it's like, I don't know, 1970s maybe? Um, and so, Johnny Carson has his late night show. Well, he has a late night rival, Jack Delroy, um, who hosts this show called Night Owls. And... <sighs> This man, he used to host the show and stuff with, like, his wife, and everybody loved his wife, but his wife died, and ever since his wife died, the ratings for the show just keep going down and down and down, so he's trying to boost his ratings. Um, this movie must have came out, like, around Halloween or something, because it's, it's Halloween in the, the show, um, so he tries to boost his ratings, and he plans for, like, this Halloween night special. But uh, it's crazy. So there, he has all these, like, weird guests and stuff, you know, and, like, people who do magic tricks and stuff like that. And then there's somebody who uh, claims that they have, they, they rescued this girl from a, a burning building. Her family was, like, part of a cult or something and this cult tried to like summon the devil or something like that right um and they were gonna have this girl on as a guest for the show because she apparently was the only survivor of this thing and she has this therapist that works with her and it's almost like a multiple personality type situation. She can put her into a trance and then the different personality can come out. Except it's not a multiple personality. It is a demon that is inside this girl. Ugh. Yikes, right? And I'm like, I don't know if I want to watch this show because I don't like that. <laughs> um, anyway, so they have a skeptic on the, the show, like on this panel you know, and they're like, see, magic tricks, you can trick people into thinking certain things, and blah, 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 and then he's claiming, like, okay, this girl is possessed by a demon, yeah, right, it's all crap, and I'll prove it, let's bring her out, have her summon this demon, and then we'll prove it wrong, you know, 
So they bring this girl out and she's freaking terrifying. Whoever this girl is, this actress, I don't know. I, I didn't know anyone in the show. She's fantastic because she, like, I was like, huh. I did not even, like, she's a pretty girl, but I did not like her face. I was like, because mm. she could change her face in an instant. It was terrifying. So, obviously, during the show, she summons this demon or devil and things get crazy and scary. And once they bring her out, that's when stuff gets, like, legit terrifying like I was saying in the beginning, I was like, oh, it was really cool because the way that it was shot, it was like, you can see it in like 1970s TV style, okay? And then I think it's like in black and white, maybe. And then when they go to commercial, you get color and you can see like what's going on behind the scenes and during the commercial breaks and stuff and then camera back and, you know, stuff like that. Um, and... I don't know it was it was very interesting the way that they filmed it i i really really liked it um because it was found footage i think but it was different because usually found footage is like the camera shaking everywhere and it's like you want to puke right it wasn't like that at all it was really awesome um so we're all like wow this is such a cool movie <laughs> oh my god i'm scared <laughs> like it got real scary here Real quick but also I'm a big baby so but everyone else said they really liked it they really liked it my daughter said she wasn't scared at all and I'm like girl you psycho like you crazy <laughs> but it scared it scared my husband and and his uh his friend during the movie after it they were fine I was not I was like thank god <laughs> thank god everyone's in the house together because no Anyway, but that is the last thing that I watched. Um, I, again, I really loved everything, but I think the two things, no, there's three things that I highly, highly recommend. Number one, The Tattooist of Auschwitz. Yes. Uh, the Long Shadow. Please watch it. And Escaping the Madhouse. The Story of Nellie Bly. Watch it. Oh my god, those three things are fantastic. Anyway, so I really hope that you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.